All right, so this game you see on the screen right now, it's going to be called soccer in this video. We're based in the U.S., so yeah. When you think of sports in the U.S., soccer isn't usually the first that comes to mind. The NFL is the current top dog in this country, and has been for quite some time. Major League Baseball and the NBA are right behind them, but at this point, it's hard to argue those aren't the top three. Major League Soccer is closer in striking distance to the NHL, which isn't a bad spot for them to be in considering the league is only 25 years old. Soccer is the most widely followed sport on the earth, but it lacked a strong united presence in the US until fairly recently. When we did our ranking of every major pro sports team in the American leagues, we didn't include MLS teams because the league simply hasn't been around long enough. That leads into a very common complaint about MLS. Who should I root for? I didn't grow up with any of these teams. Well, MLS has established its footing, and you, yes, you, should give it a shot. Whether you live in North America and have at least somewhat of an interest in sports, or you're a passionate international soccer fan, here's why MLS deserves a chance. Major League Soccer is the fastest growing league in the country, and maybe up there for the whole world, honestly. The league's first season was in 1996, and they started with 10 teams. In 2020, they're up to 26. The majority of that expansion has been within the last 10 years as well. Look at this list of new teams since 2010 alone. And that's not counting the four more on the way in the next several years. They've gone from tiny to giant quicker than Ant-Man, and they didn't even need any orange slices. Put it this way, if you live in the US, odds are there's a team relatively nearby you can pick up. They do really well on attendance too. Atlanta United averaged 52,000 people per game in 2019. Seattle averaged 40,000, and the league average was a little over 21,000, which is very good. The fan atmosphere at Major League Soccer games is awesome. I went to the 2018 MLS All-Star Game, and I have never been to a sporting event like it. The vibes were just 72,000 people cheering non-stop for like two to three hours straight. No breaks. It was amazing. You know how most live sports try to make scoring feel more exciting with some kind of crowd reward? like a sound effect or a goal horn being a very common way to do that, MLS teams kill it with that. When the Portland Timbers score in a home game, there's literally a guy with a chainsaw who hacks off part of a tree that he brings into the stadium. And the tree slice is like kind of a trophy among players who score goals. It started out as just some ordinary guy coming into the stadium and doing it, but the team embraced it. Literally the plot of the Simpsons episode Dance and Homer. The current guy doing it is a successor to the original throne, which gives off major superhero energy if it didn't already. Atlanta has a tradition centered around hammering a golden spike. In Minnesota, everyone sings Wonderwall by Oasis when they win. Fun little ongoing traditions like that just amplify the fan experience all over MLS. Traditions aren't even limited to things like that. When Barcelona plays Real Madrid, they call it El Clasico. When the LA Galaxy plays LAFC, they call it El Trafico. Get it? Because LA has a lot of traffic. Look, if GTA 5 teaches you any life lessons, it'd be that LA has traffic and golf is really frustrating. Thanks for coming to my TED Talk. Back to soccer now. Major League Soccer has also shown to have considerable parity and unpredictability, which most other major soccer leagues haven't been able to say. FC Cincinnati was considered one of, if not the worst teams in the league, and they upset Atlanta, who is a very common choice for best team in the league during the MLS's back tournament. Orlando City was a consensus bottom half of the league team, and they made it all the way to the final in that tournament. MLS recognizes two kinds of champions. There's the Supporter Shield and the MLS Cup. The Supporter Shield is basically the regular season champion, and over the last 10 years, only two teams that have won the Shield even got to the MLS Cup. Both the MLS Cup and the Supporter Shield have had seven different franchises win over the last 10 years. That's the same number of teams that have won the Super Bowl, and the World Series, and the NBA Finals, and almost the same number as the Stanley Cup. Wild. Point being, if you think any of these leagues have enough variety in who wins recently, MLS is right on par with them. For the record, that wasn't supposed to be a pun since we were talking about parody, but yep. MLS also has much more on-field talent than ever before. The best player in the league right now is Carlos Vela from LAFC. He's got plenty of experience playing in Europe, and set a new league record for goals in a season in 2019. Joseph Martinez of Atlanta is Ben Franklin's kite level of electric. 
I had the privilege of seeing him play in person at the game I mentioned earlier, and let me tell you, I left the stadium thinking about how much of an impression the guy's talent left on me. He tore his ACL in March, so he's going to miss some time as of the release of this video, but he's someone you can seek out to watch on his own when he's back. Inter Miami is a brand new team, and they just picked up a guy named Blaise Matuidi. He started for the last World Cup winning team, and a team that's consistently one of the best in Europe. Cristiano Ronaldo said he'd probably play in the league in the future too. Emphasis on probably though, not definite. But if you think he'd be too old by the time he gets to America, that dude when he's 70 is probably going to be in better shape than like 99% of the planet. This country and league are also becoming stronger exports for European leagues, which obviously have superiority over MLS. More good young players from the league are becoming sought after by European teams, and it looks like more will follow. And hey, one of the best players in the world is American. No, he didn't come from Major League Soccer, but that should still count for something towards soccer in this country. The future looks bright for the league. They're reporting that ratings are going up, cities with very few or no pro sports teams are on the verge of joining the league, and there's even talk that they may end up sort of merging with the Mexican League Liga MX down the line. Like, actually. This might sound like a bad thing at first, but it would only strengthen the league and the presence of soccer in North America if done right. So if you're looking for a good sports fix of a league on the rise with fun fan atmosphere when the pandemic ends obviously, blossoming stars, a healthy dose of unpredictability, and bright new prospects on the horizon, give MLS a shot. After all, a trusted adult probably told you to try new things once in a while when you were a kid. It paid off for Broccoli, it'll pay off for MLS too. Whether you live in North America or not, there's something redeeming in this league's brand of soccer for you. Thank you guys for watching, hope you enjoyed, feel free to click the subscribe button, the like button, any of those things down there. Follow me and SRS on Twitter, and yeah, have a nice day. Thanks.